that's not rolling. Is it? <laughs> Are we rolling? I. Oh yeah, baby. I hope oh, so. Okay, we're gonna. Well, get yeah. Well, okay. Scooch over. Made in Canada was great. Thanks. And in Halifax, right? Oh yeah. Are you from, from Halifax? Halifax? Yeah. Oh, I love Halifax. Yeah. Halifax yeah. in the summertime, lobster. Yeah. What could go wrong? That's and so Perdium. great. Oh, I love it. And per diem, is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the things about actors that nobody knows. A per diem is like the greatest thing about it our is. lives because it's like free money that gets thrown our way when we're on location. We can go out and do whatever we want with it, and the agents don't have any say about it. And we don't have to go to the bank. It is just a glorious it's per diem. Milk money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I loved Newsroom was my all-time favorite Canadian show, oh. and your character was so brilliant. Thank you. Was he? Um, were you doing a Ted Knight thing there? Or I mean, I know. You know, it's funny. Everybody asks that, but it, it was one of those things where where Ken said right at the get-go that well, I don't want any acting here. There's no there's no acting involved in this show, so I had to bring a lot of myself to it. I, it had to be me, but the problem was that I'm. I, you know, I always say as a joke, I, my, the character that I play are, 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 are you know, not as, <laughs> not as dumb as I actually am. So the, the, the trick was actually to do profoundly stupid characters and not laugh. And Ken and I had a really hard time. That, that one scene, I don't know if you remember, with the, 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 the choice for abortion should be between a woman, a doctor, and her dog, is what I thought you said, instead of her god. <laughs> and so he's reproaching me for this, and there wasn't a chance in hell that I was not going to laugh while he's sort of berating me about, did you actually think she said dog? Does that make sense? So eventually, after take 15, where we were just giggling like little girls, we, we, I got off camera, and he looked at a spot on the wall, and I looked on the spot on the wall. <laughs> you talked to the wall? Yeah. But it was fun. I mean, I, you know, I guess it was, it was my first foray into playing, I don't know if this makes sense, but like playing comedy straight, you know, like not... Right. Not tongue in cheek, just making sure that it's that it's that there's it, there's a basis of realism in it, and and if people actually could suspend belief that I actually could be an anchorman, then I I know I've done my job. Oh, you are very believable. I wanted yeah. to do. A, I wanted. I've always since that show was on, and people seemed to glean onto my character. I wanted to do an April Fool's joke where I just came on and I read the news in the morning, just the headlines <laughs> at that ten o'clock on News World. Oh, that and would I, have been and amazing. And I got so close. I, I, every year I tried, and then one year they said, yes, yes, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And it got to within a half an hour of me getting in the car and coming down to do it, and the head of the News World said, no. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's Boo. so yeah. Yeah. Wow. People would love that. I thought it would be fun. I think you must be the only actor on the planet who's been on both Red Green and Seinfeld. So what was it like being on Seinfeld? But. Seinfeld was was a lot of fun. I mean, I I have a regret that I never did the second episode. You know, they asked me back to do the second episode, and I my my visa had expired. So I tried <gasps> oh, you're everything. kidding! Yeah. So the casting director Mark Hirschfeld, who's now the head of casting for NBC, he's gone on to bigger and better things. But he called me and said, you know, we're doing another episode with your character. Can you come back? And I said, yeah. But I need a visa, you know, because my visa had expired, yeah. and they had since changed the visa rules. Long story short, oh. I couldn't get the bees in time, so I, I, I did oh. everything. I emailed oh. the prime minister, I faxed the border. It's I did. Seinfeld. <laughs> it's Seinfeld. In retrospect, if I, if I didn't tell them that I didn't have a visa, I could have just have done it. The visa would have come through while I was doing it. Oh, that's so Canadian of you to, it was, uh, to have exactly to be really right. honest. I, I was too honest. This is a said. huge opportunity, you know, but I well, have to be honest. In a million years, I didn't think Castle Rock and NBC would have a problem getting me a visa. You know? but, yeah, that's true. I would think they would have some power. Know, yeah. <laughs> we should talk about 18 to Life. Do you know about the show? The, the show is. A, I know the about, concept. Yeah, two couples. One ultra right wing conservative couple, and next door is a uh, very hippie couple, and they have a daughter, and we have a son. And with big plans. We have big plans for the boy. Does he satisfy you in bed? Mom! You're more than welcome to borrow our Kama Sutra. It really works. Can you smell that? The smell of a transmission bleeding for its life! Henry, Henry, you! The love of God! How delightful that our children are fornicating. Indeed. But anyways, long story short, they get married on a dare, and they're 18 years old, 
and so it's a conflict between the fact that they're 18 and they're doing something very traditional, which is getting married, as opposed to just sort of living together and not telling the parents, and a conflict between the two very uh, opposing kinds of, of, of ideologies with ideologies with the, with the parents. Yeah. That's the show, and I play Ben Bello, who's a very right-wing conservative judge, conser uh, converted to Judaism. Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So the woman who played, like the wife character, is she? Ellen David is like the Jewish leader. So <laughs> uh, there was no way I was going to be married to her and not be Jewish. So right. <laughs> so uh, have you worked with this particular team of people before, the, the producers and writers? No, no new... Karen, Karen and Derek uh, uh, came from other shows, and we'd, we'd never worked together, um, and uh, we met up in Toronto where they first were trying to get this thing cast and mm -hmm. I think they had virtually everybody else except my character. I think my character was like the last to be cast. And you worked on General Hospital, I read. Yeah. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, that was an experience. Wow, but everyone seems to have started out in soaps, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, you can get, you can start out in soaps, but the, the trick is not to get stuck in soaps, I think, is the thing. Right. You know, because there's, there's that real sort of stigma behind being a soap star and then trying to break into mainstream television you yeah. know yeah. you either stay there yeah. or you don't and I guess it the way it used to be with television and film actors you didn't yeah. there was no crossing over or television and theater actors right now television is so highbrow that you have all these big stars yeah. you know because of Doing HBO both. and yeah Showtime. and and it's a whole new world with new media I mean yeah. where, where does where does entertainment come from it's it's all YouTube now it's all yeah you know how you how you know Will Ferrell has his own website with oh uh, funny or die yeah. that one yeah. yeah that's great yeah. But how weird is it to work on a soap opera? I mean, I've always wondered, what you know, is it this? Um, it was very, it was very weird for me, only because the woman that created General Hospital, her name was Gloria Monty, and she was sort of the matriarch of the show, and she was elderly when she hired me. In other words, I went in and auditioned. I got the part of this uh, cousin that was that was going to bring Emma Sam's character back. Her name was Holly. Yes, right? Emma Sam's, yes. Yeah. Right, so I was a nefarious cousin that had her hidden. Do you remember she disappeared yeah. for a while and presumed dead? Well, yeah. and she Sorry, had... I don't know the plot line. I do. Robin, clearly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So she had amnesia on some island somewhere, whatever the case was. Anyways, we came back and we were to, to steal a stamp, an incredibly valuable stamp from this family. <laughs> That's so so and opera. I, yeah, and I was playing a British character. Right? Anyway. <laughs> Long story short, the woman that hired me, Gloria Monty, was fired at the same time I was hired. Wow. Okay? Now, keep in mind... She was fired for hiring you? No, I hope not. <laughs> so we interviewed uh, Reg uh, Harkema for uh, Leslie, My Name is Evil. Oh, yeah. And um, So you were in that film. So what, who was your character? <laughs> were you uh, a... right-wing conservative asshole. Hey! <laughs> this is my speciality. Coincidentally, that's exactly what I play on that. Really? Show. Yeah. A Nixon loving conservative <laughs> cardigan wearing, um, you know. Right. Thinks that napalm is a good thing. <laughs> it isn't? It's the hair. <laughs> it's the hair. Yeah, it's a, you have a lot of it. I have a lot it's of it, and it very, always looks the same, so, you know. It's very glossy, too. Coma the right way, and I look like an anchor man. <laughs> so you live in the beach? I live in the beach. I've seen you. I've seen you at Downward Dog stalking. I don't you. stare, but yeah. are you a Downward Dog? I'm a Downward Dogger. You bet. On Monday nights, I do it for my psyche. Because I jogged for years and years, and it was the first time my legs didn't hurt. It was the first time I did yoga. You're not a yoga snob. You know, no. you have to have the right mad and the right. Well, Lululemon. you know, I actually did notice Peter was kind of doing that Lululemon strut there. I don't have any Lulu. I don't. Oh, I'm kidding. No, no, I know you don't. I have no. an old pair of sweatpants <laughs> that. No, I he's totally be wearing, wearing these like hot pink <laughs> Lululemon yeah. I don't believe uh, you. Caprice. <laughs> it's a great place to be, guys. Yeah. 